to you. Oh, you guys don't have to get better than that. I might as well tell you now, I mean, if you're going to sit through this service, there, there's, especially during the sermon, there's about four or five, maybe a dozen times where I'm going to ask you, or say Christ is risen, and you're going to reply, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All together, in unison. Do we need to practice? How about we try one more time? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Don't forget there is no Man of Monday tomorrow, April 1st. Oh, I bet this is Saturday. <laughs> there is, on Monday, April 1st, there is no Man of Monday. Uh, confirmation class will resume again, 6 p.m. in the Little Angels room on April 3rd. That's this Wednesday coming up. Social committee has a meeting at 2.30 on April 3rd, which is Wednesday. The Ladies Spring Garden Gala is coming up on April 24th at 6 p.m., uh, again, the meal is lasagna or mac and cheese. I haven't made that connection yet. Somebody's got to explain that to me. It's, well, it's what? The kids might like mac and cheese. Oh, sure. Got the hot dogs in it? No? <laughs> <laughs> you tell the Wendy to do that for years, she won't do it. Uh, garden salad, bread, ice cream, and cookie. So don't forget, on the 24th, also there is a spring sing-along at all in the States. April 16th from 3 to 4 p.m. There is a sign-up sheet on the narthex. There is also a sign-up sheet for the Ladies' Garden Gala as well. Uh, which brings us, well, before I get into the Bible study, Bible studies resume this week, of course. Uh, but before I do that, I want to thank everyone who was involved with the Seder Supper. If you weren't here, there are pictures. I, some little elves came out and took pictures. I don't know when they did it. I didn't see them do it. But lo and behold, on the bulletin board, there's a bunch of pictures from Thursday night when we had our Seder Supper. So uh, if you had, wasn't there, you can see the pictures. But again, thank you to everyone who helped out with that. It was a really wonderful thing. Now, back to Bible studies. Don't forget Tuesday morning. Gentlemen, we meet at Four Sisters Restaurant in Jefferson. Thursday morning, we'll meet as usual in the Fellowship Hall at 9 a.m. going over the Book of Hebrews. Then Sunday morning, uh, not this Sunday, the following Sunday, not Easter, but the following Sunday, we'll begin a study on Philippians right after worship in the Little Angels Room. That takes care of all the announcements that I have. Does anybody have one that I missed? If not, please rise. We follow the order of service that's printed in our service folder and begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of God, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, forgiveness, and peace are yours from him who is, who was, and who is to come. From our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us the kingdom of the priests to serve God the Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Come and see the place where he lay. Remember how he told you, the Son of Man must be raised again on the third day. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. I will not die for the dead, and proclaim what the Lord has done. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But the thanks to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God invites us to come into His presence and worship Him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask Him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. to hear the word of the Lord. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich foods for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheep that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly. Psalm 16 is printed. Keep me safe, O God. For in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the grave. Nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain, for what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Israel to its glory. The one who would bring back David and Solomon, the kingdom of Israel as it once was, or so they thought. He was now dead. So, man, that had to bring on some depression, right? Or think about the shame these women had. I mean, they had followed Jesus not only for a few months, but for three years. They had tended to his needs. Think of the expense that they went through. They had provided for his food and for him and his disciples. They provided for all his needs. They traveled with him. And all their friends back home had witnessed this. And now they must be thinking, these crazy women. Look what all they did. And yet it was for nothing. Now the women were going to have to go back to their hometowns and face all these people. But you know what? In spite of all of that, somehow these women overcame their roadblocks. So on Easter Sunday morning, as the sun was coming up, as the Sabbath was ending, they were going their way to the tomb to perform one more act of love for Jesus. They were going to anoint his body with spices. That was the Jewish custom. They were on their way, and as they were just about there, they remembered just one more thing. Well, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Who's going to take care of that problem? Well, so far in Jesus' passion, we focused on the people that Jesus was closely connected to, his disciples, disciple wannabes, and people that were involved in his trial and his execution. But this evening we're looking at the women, the witnesses. Do you realize it was the women who were the first? They were the first to learn of Jesus' resurrection. Who remembered as they watched Jesus die from a distance or as they placed the body in the tomb? What thoughts were going through their head? What tears they must have shed? But on this morning as the sun was coming up, as dawn was rising in the east, as the Sabbath was ending, they came to the place where their Savior was laid. It was not too late to do some final preparation of Jesus' body. It only been a few days. But they needed to get it done before the heat of the day set in. So with heavy hearts they wondered, who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the tomb? Can you imagine the shock and amazement they must have felt when they finally came up over the hill and saw the tomb for the first time? They saw that that stone was rolled away. They get to the tomb, they go inside. Guess what they found? Nothing. Oh, maybe I should have tried so hard for this. <laughs> they found nobody. No body. Nobody? It worked better in my head. They found nobody. But as Wendy said, they had two angels that appeared there and they were speaking with them and their clothing gleamed like lightning. And the women were the first to ever hear the words, the same words that Christians ever since that day have been using to greet one another since Jesus Christ rose from the dead. They heard, He is risen. <laughs> She'll keep you going. She's been doing this with me for 30 years. You may lag a little bit, but just look to her. She'll keep you going. <laughs> That's right. He is risen. Three simple words that forever change everyone's lives, including ours. But think about it. As the women were approaching, fear must have been flooding over them. What did all this mean, right? I mean, how could this be? Joy mingled with fear. Jesus is alive. They trembled as they ran from the tomb. They could not have gone very far when suddenly... There he was. Jesus appeared in front of them and greeted them. This was his first appearance after he rose. The women approached him a little scared at first. They couldn't believe their eyes because, I mean, we're looking right at him. Christ is risen. <laughs> You'll catch on. Uh, maybe not. Maybe if you come back tomorrow. <laughs> By the end of the 930 service, you should have it down. <laughs> Just ask the people tomorrow, I think I, I always compare Saturday and Sunday. Those of you who attend both, you know that. No, that's right. Christ is risen. risen. I deserve that. <laughs> Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them as they clasped his feet and worshipped him. But he told them the same thing the angel had said. They said, go and tell my brothers. And so they went. They went and found the disciples. 
You know how excited these women must have been to tell the good news, to tell the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead, that he was alive? He's not in the tomb. He has risen from the dead. They saw the empty tomb with the angels in it. They had heard the angel tell them that Jesus was alive. They actually had seen Jesus on the road on their way back. They actually had all the facts that they needed. So all they wanted to do was keep telling the good news. Now you would expect the disciples to rejoice with the women and celebrate. But no, right? No, the disciples, well, the woman's account, it made no sense to them. They thought they were just uttering nonsense. That's the kind of reaction. The women got the kind of reaction from the disciples of Jesus that really isn't any different than what we get when we talk to unbelievers today. I mean, maybe it was just the news was too good to be true. I mean, or pretty much impossible. Nobody had ever come back from the dead before, except the ones that Jesus raised. Raised. Now, I suppose we can hardly find fault with the disciples for their skepticism. I mean, after all, their sinful nature didn't hold on to the words of Jesus. He told them again and again and again and again that he would suffer, he would die, but in three days he would rise. Now, you think the disciples would have been camped out by the tomb waiting for Jesus to walk out. But no, they weren't. They also experienced a huge stone. It was actually called unbelief, fear. And, well, it just didn't think it could happen. The tomb was empty, though. And they went away from the tomb astounded. Mary Magdalene returns to the tomb shortly after Peter and John left. She was there with the other women, but she didn't go with them and didn't see Jesus when he first appeared. So in order to comfort her, she was bitterly crying. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. And there she could see. She could see Christ is risen. He is risen. Indeed. Hallelujah. That's better. <laughs> he tried Mary's tears as he does ours. He, her grief changed to unspeakable joy. And she ran off telling everybody, I have seen the Lord. It's the word from the women that began to spread rapidly through Jerusalem. I mean, yes, everybody knew the body was missing. Word was starting to get around. Jesus had appeared to a few people. And then there were others. There were two men on the way to the city of Emmaus who were wondering about these stories that were circulating. They soon found out the truth when Jesus joined them as they walked along the road. They were slow to believe like everybody else until Jesus started sharing the scripture with them. And then their hearts burned within them. They recognized Jesus just before he vanished from their sight. And then what did they do? They hurried back to Jerusalem, back to find the disciples to tell everybody that they too had seen Jesus, that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. See, this helps. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think Peter would say? Because there they found the disciples, there they found Peter, they found all of them, and they all heard the stories about Jesus rising from the grave, and then Jesus appears to all the disciples that evening, and the first thing he says to them is, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. He calmed their troubled hearts and began to prepare his disciples for the ministry that they were about to embark on. Those disciples would go out and they would preach repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name to all nations. Gradually, more and more people believe the woman's message, and it has been the keynote of every pastor's sermon since then. The disciples included it in the sermons they preached. The uh, Apostle Paul reminds us of that. He reminds us that our faith is meaningless without the resurrection. Only a living Jesus can, does, and give us life. So today we're like the women on that first blessed Easter morning. We have all seen the empty tomb. We have seen and heard the risen Savior. He sacrificed for our sins. We know that God approved of it. How do we know? Because Christ is risen. His promises are true. His heaven is ready for us. His glory shines for us. He is risen. Jesus lives for us. The best thing about Easter is the shortest sermon of the year I'm going to give. Brothers and sisters, this is God's word of resurrection for you. Please rise. Please rise.
brothers and sisters in Christ, may this body which has been given for you and may this blood which has been shed for you strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. You can depart from the Lord's table in joy and that peace with God. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you that you have again refreshed us with the gift of your body and blood in this comforting sacrament. Bless our participation that we may depart from your presence with peace and joy in the knowledge that we are reconciled to God. We ask this in your name, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Yeah.